Frozen, or Cold Squirrels, is one of the strongest builds in Last Epoch. However, it will require a Herald of the Scurry, which is one of the more rare items within the entire game. This item will transform your wolves into squirrels. On top of that, it'll actually boost the number of points that you get to distribute within the Summon Wolf skill as well. This, combined with dual-wielding Apogee of Frozen Light, will allow you to get a dramatic boost to the number of skill points available in order to transform the ability. This build is all about speed and mobility. As you can see, Fury Leap is just an incredible tool in order to traverse the maps, complete objectives, and simply run Echoes faster. If you're looking for a better boss, killer version of this you can always refer to turbo's death knight squirrel version as well that's going to use yulia's path which is going to give you additional flat damage while maelstrom is active however this version will use fury leap not only is it incredibly useful for mobility it can help you survive and on top of that you can actually cut corners with the skill just allowing you to travel through the maps quicker the squirrels thanks to all the buffs that they get are incredibly powerful on their own so if you like minion builds well you're definitely in luck as you can see i can simply run around avoiding damage and the squirrels will take care of everything for me however by adding in the other skills that you have at your disposal disposal, you can then make quicker work of everything around you, just allowing you to complete the echoes faster, farming more items with legendary potential. Legendary potential will just allow you to take this build even further to push as far as you would like in terms of corruption. Both Ribbons of Blood and the Fang are two popular items that are used in many squirrel versions that you may have seen before, and these work really well regardless of playing a physical version, a cold version, or whichever version it may be. The Fang, although it doesn't directly add additional points to your summon wolf skill, it does prevent them from being stunned, and it allows you to summon wolves up to your maximum number of companions. Those traits will directly replace both Relentless and Safety in Numbers, so you can actually save two talent points. So although you don't get them directly, it's essentially allowing you more freedom. In this video, we're using 29 skill points for the summon wolf and this can actually be pushed higher provided you have legendary potential and we're fortunate to get some lucky rolls on what you obtained the 29 can be obtained three from one sword three from another for a total of six you gain two more from a helm in this example and then you can get an additional one from having the dedication of an erased primalist this is of course an end game build in fact you can't even bring the build online until you reach level 76 because the helmet can't be equipped until then you can run a version with wolves if you want to use this build just to level up or do some other content of your preference. However, this video will cover what's possible once you reach level 76 and have the Helmet of the Scurvy online. For reference, Turbo's Death Knight version is possible at level 79. That's because Yulia's path can't be equipped prior to then. The emphasis on this build is strictly speed and mobility. It's also very useful for defending objectives in the case where you get things like sealing the Stormgate in this example here. The added mobility is really nice for dodging some of the incoming damage or just enemies that may be around, and this is increasingly effective as you get higher in corruption. As for single target, don't worry, this build still has plenty of single target damage to absolutely melt targets. You can see that Exiled Mage is no problem at all. Does this build have as much single target as Turbo's Death Knight version? No, it does not. That's just the reality of it. This build is designed in order to quickly go through Echo so that you can continue farming gear and progress your character. However, that isn't to say that this build can't devastate bosses and make quick work of them as well. As for the remainder of non-required pieces in this build, you'll have an open glove slot, boots, belts, chest, and one ring slot in which you can fill with whatever you feel most beneficial or that you have access to. At this point, I'm running Woven Flesh, which is a fairly common, unique piece of gear that you'll find, and this is going to give you plus 100% critical strike avoidance. That's the most important stat on this particular piece. As for the belt and the other ring slot, I'm mainly just looking for minion health and minion damage. This is just going to increase the survivability of the squirrels and the damage output that they have. For boots, I find the most important thing is to have not only movement speed on the implicit property, but also get movement speed as one of the affixes. This is really going to increase your mobility. And again, this build is all about speed. In this situation, the glove is actually really just fulfilling the need for resistances. Use this however you may need. You may have different resistance values that need to be filled. The specialization points for all of the skills and even the passive tree are all pretty straightforward for squirrel builds. They typically don't have much deviation. If you're running this version, which has Fury Leap, five points in Sky Warrior, which is underneath the Shaman Tree, is really nice because this is going to reduce the cooldown of your Fury Leap. However, if you've traded Fury Leap for Maelstrom, which is done in Turbo's Death Knight version, you may want to place those points in Attunement and Penetration. Like other squirrel builds, we'll also use multiple layers of defensive properties as well, done through our passive tree. Ursine Strength, reducing the damage taken from nearby enemies enemies, Berserker, wall and low health, reducing the damage that we receive. Finally, we've got Boar Heart, which will grant aspect to the boar. And on top of that, we can get additional damage reduction while this is active as well. I'll leave a link in the video description where you can see a point by point distribution for every single one of these points. 
and I'll also leave the information for the specialization skills as well. In terms of gameplay, things are very straightforward. You'll use Fury Leap basically just to jump from pack to pack as often as possible. Now we've also got the Frenzy Totem, which we can drop upon arrival, and that's going to allow us just to do a large amount of damage. Against more dangerous enemies, you can actually jump in, use your War Cry, that'll freeze everything while you get your Frenzy Totem down, and then you can use the Howl if need be. However, typically most things are dead before then. Now let's go ahead and do some live gameplay as we work our way through an Echo, and everything's very straightforward as you've seen in the video so far. We're going to chop down what enemies we can, we'll jump around corners just kind of shortening the overall length. At this point we're just trying to slay enemies, and my squirrels are essentially doing that and while they just run behind me. I can jump from pack to pack, use the Howl, haven't really encountered anything dangerous at this point, but if you do you've always got that war cry essentially to lock them in place. Now we've seen the objective so we'll work our way in that direction, again just using the leap whenever possible to just get there as fast as possible. Jump into the final enemy. Chop this down when we get the opportunity to drop the totem we could, however the enemy is just going to melt. That basically sums up the build. If you like minions or you like just absolutely high DPS builds, this is the perfect choice. You can use this build with the added mobility or you can transition it into Turbo's version if you prefer higher boss damage. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.